All right, so I'm working on installing the Michael Boltons here, and I already have one installed in this pair of brand new F1 races that I got off eBay. And I wanted to spend a little bit of time um, going through what I found seemed to work uh, well for me. I'm about to start on the second boot. And I spent a lot of time on the first boot making a bunch of measurements, uh, most of which weren't really needed. Um, but I know uh, now where approximately where the puck needs to go. Uh, so I'm going to show how I remove the sole. I found a way that seems to work pretty well. It's quite easy. Um, I'll do that and then I'll try to get some video of kind of the key um, critical things to do when you install these. So I have a heat gun, which is great. I think a, a hairdryer probably works fine. And what I found works really well is the heat gun with this uh, one and a half inch flexible putty knife, which a friend of mine gave to me, which actually has a little bit of a sharpened edge, but it's not super sharp. So uh, what I'm gonna do is actually uh, heat up this region in the middle where this little uh, piece of sole is, and then also heat up the putty knife and then try to like get it under there to get it started. And then once you do that, you can kind of peel uh, the sole back, you can lift up on it and heat underneath and heat the putty knife to get the rest of it up. It's gonna be hard for me to film, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that. enough to get it started you basically have to kind of break this glue here all right so I'm gonna turn off the video and go ahead and give this another heat and then I'll cut it basically along here and then start pulling it back. Okay, I got the putty knife under there. Now I know that uh, for my other boot that I need to cut right around the R here. So I'm gonna cut across here, put the putty knife underneath so that I'm not scraping into the boot when I cut. Right, so got that cut. Now I can pull up on this as I heat under this to pull the sole back. And again, I know from the other boot approximately where I need to go. Um, if you're doing this for the first time, really I can't imagine doing this without actually having a binding that you're fitting this to. Um, so I already have my ski with my Mejo binding, clip the boot in at the toe, and I can roughly place and know where the puck needs to go uh, beforehand before I start cutting stuff off. Um, so the first boot I made measurements, but the second one I kind of know where I'm going. So I know I need to go roughly to around here on the sole. So I'm gonna pull that back and then uh, cut across it and that'll get this area cleared up uh, to start placing the puck. All right, now I have gotten this uh, all pulled back ready to go. I found that these uh, wire snips actually do a great job cutting through the rubber. Don't even have to use an X-Acto knife. I know from my other boot that the outer side of the foot 
Uh, you can leave this on. I don't even know if this is really necessary. You could definitely just cut straight across. I left it on for now. If it's annoying uh, later, I may go ahead and cut it off. But uh, for now, just to try to leave as much sole material as possible, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And um, I'm not gonna worry too much about trying to make this exact here, but you know, um, everyone will think differently about how careful they wanna be with that. So any, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, snip along here. All right, so I've gotten this all uh, cut off with my snips and can place the micro bolt on roughly in place there. And then I'm gonna do a quick fit on the ski to make sure it looks like it's sitting in the right spot. All right, I'm about to test fit my F1 into this Mejo binding um, but I want to take a video first showing for reference where the heel hits the binding on my TX Pros. And so zooming in on this, so you see this ramp here and this is a little chewed up, but basically the face of the back of this should be about at the top of the ramp. Um, and then also side to side, it's hard to see, but you can just visually see if you look on this side and the other side that it's centered left to right. Those are the two main things that are relevant for getting the bolt on in the right position. I'll point out that you can always go back a little on the bolt on and then shave some off. If you mount it too far forward, then you could be in trouble. I try to mount it right where I want it um and take my chance try to get it right the first time now on my other uh one that i've already mounted on the f1 i did all these measuring trying to center it and everything and then basically in the end just said screw it and my approach was to um, add shoe goo to the bolt-on to glue it on and that that actually gets it pretty close it'll actually stay in place and then you can put the boot in the binding and uh, move the bolt on around to get it in the right spot so that it looks just like this and then uh you can let it dry a little bit make sure it's in the right spot and then drill your holes it's really that easy um i can say so eric fay from telemark down turned me on to shugu as uh a thing to use for like filling holes in uh, skis. So I had this around and uh, it works great. It's really bomber stuff um, to glue the bolt on onto the bottom for positioning it. Um, and that seems to work really well. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and do this other boot and then we'll see how it turned out. All right, so I have fit the micro bolt on piece <clears throat> onto the bottom of the boot by um, clearing out the space, first of all, and then I've um, actually put it down on there and gotten it centered left to right and front to back so that it's sitting on the ramp just like I want it. This is just kind of on there roughly. And then uh, once I got it centered, I held it in position and uh, folded the boot up and then ran a thin sharpie around the edges there to mark where it's supposed to go. Um, and this is just a rough guide to where it's supposed to go. So now I am going to put the shoe goo on this plate, this bottom, stick it on there, and then do the final positioning uh, with it back down on the binding. So I've got the bolt on glued on now with the shoe goo and I've moved it into position again paying attention to having it sit here on the edge of the ramp and then making sure that left or right that the bolt-on is positioned properly and then um, the weight of the boot this one is actually kind of close looks like it's sitting on this but I'm going to set something in the boot to give it a little weight to kind of hold it here. I'll kind of make sure this is um, 
in position and then I will let it sit for, you know, five or 10 minutes uh, and harden up a little bit. And then I'll be ready to do my drilling. So while the shoe goo is drying, I'm just taking a look here at the hardware that I have installed. Um, I'll just quickly say what these are and then make a few comments. So these are uh, 1024 by 5 16 and these machine screws are 1024 by half an inch. Um, a couple things, so I found these at my hardware store. They're very similar to the ones that a lot of people have used that have the little um, teeth on them, but these don't have any teeth. Um, the recommendations that I've read online say that if you do get the ones with the teeth, you need to cut them off or bend them back so they don't cut into the boot because um, there is some worry that you can damage the sole of the boot that way. Um, and so I thought these were quite convenient because you don't even have to worry. Okay, so the glue has dried enough that I'm confident it's in the right position. I'm about to drill my first holes. So the um, 1024 uh, T-nuts that I got that I showed you earlier call for a 15 uh, drill hole size, which is uh, just shy of one quarter inch. On the other boot, I found that I actually needed to drill to actually use a quarter inch drill bit to get those in. Um, but in any case, I am going to first drill with a very small bit and really try to get that centered in the middle of the hole. The reason for that is that if I just kind of shove a drill bit in there uh, and hope it's in the right spot, I may um, actually either move the plate um, or I might move the plate in if I, I really don't want to move the plate. I really, really want to try to uh, keep it still. If I do move it, it's probably okay. Um, I probably have a little slop to go forward or um, certainly if I go back, I could uh, grind off this edge, but I really don't want to do that. I'd prefer to not have to do uh, any adjustments. I'm going to put one in up here first and then double check uh, before I do any more. The reason I chose to do one here first is that the material is thicker here. So if I did mess something up, um, I could grind this out so that I could move the plate a little bit. Uh, so I'll do one. I'll check, assuming that's good, I'll do one in the opposite corner, check, and then do the last two. All right, I've got these two screws in. Um, couple tips that I didn't mention earlier. One is if you have a punch um, to punch in the middle of the hole to get it started, that's great. Um, also, I used a very small drill bit to start, something like that thing and then I actually stepped it up to something a tiny bit bigger before finally using the quarter inch bit. Um, that may be way overkill, but I'm just trying to be really careful. Uh, another thing as I screw these in, uh, the glue I put in kind of juices out. So I'm gonna kind of try to excavate some of that glue. Um, shouldn't be a big deal, but um, just clean it out a little bit and then I'm gonna drill those last two holes um, and then we'll be done almost I've got all four bolts in which is awesome and did the double check that it's setting in there looking good looks like it's on the ramp and should be working so now I got a couple little um, final details to deal with so uh, these top two bolts are good. The bottom two are sticking out in the boot, which I will show you if you look carefully in there. Um, those bottom two ones are sticking out. And so <clears throat> I'm gonna reach in there, Sharpie, try to mark where they are, pull them out, zip off the ends with a Dremel, and then put them back in. And when I do the final bolt install, I am uh, using a thread locker. Um, I think this is medium strength, but high strength will be fine too. Because um, I really don't want those things to uh, 
loosen their way out. Another thing you could do is actually consider putting um, shoe goo on them, but that's likely to make the threads kind of messy. So I'm gonna start with that. I'm also going to um, try to clean up the glue around the edge, although again, it doesn't matter that much. Uh, also glue that guy back down. And then finally, at the very end, uh, I'm gonna cover this with anti-ice tape. Um, so this anti-ice tape uh, is some stuff I got uh, off Amazon that's like, I think they say it's for fixing strips on vacuum sealers or something like that. Um, it's like a fiberglass tape. It's actually very similar to what comes uh, with the Medjo under the binding. So I've used this on my other Medjo binding um, to tape up, uh, do anti-ice stuff. But yeah, I'm just gonna put some anti-ice over this for starters. Like, let me come back later and actually put some, uh, glue some rubber over that. But uh, the word on the street is that these things will be little snow and ice magnets if you don't cover them in something. So I'm gonna do that. There it is. Uh, got the screws in, got the thread lock on, and got the anti-ice tape here on the bottom. Now I'm going to go try it out and see if it'll clip into the ski. All right, the moment of truth. I'm either going to invent some new curse words or be happy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.